Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased to welcome you to uh, the plenary lecture of uh, today. Uh, we have here Professor Christian Bankov, who is a friend, a colleague, a fellow event supporter, and uh, one of the best semi-editions of the new generation, uh, quite definitely. He's a, a professor at New Bulgarian University in Sofia. Uh, he's director of the Southeast uh, European Center for Semiotics, still the same uh, uh, institution. And uh, since uh, 2014, he's also the general secretary of the International Society for Semiotic Studies, which is the largest and most important uh, uh, semiotic organization uh, in the world. So I'm uh, very pleased to uh, uh, leave the floor to him. The title of his lecture will be Education, Communication, and Consumer Culture. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody, hello, celebrations. I'm very pleased to be part of this um, event. I'm sorry that I could arrive only just before the beginning of this uh, lecture because due this in my home university, but I'm really uh, surprised for the reason how many uh, people are here and this excellent place I'm here for the first time and my uh, first impression, impression is very good. And now I see that also my presentation, which is a bit, uh, let's say, not orthodoxically semiotic, but uh, just showing how the semiotic awareness of how culture and education works may give some ideas for imagining the university of the future. Somehow I feel that this is the right place to share these kind of ideas. Uh, so, before I start, what is the connection between education and consumer culture and semiotics? It is not very, let's say, mainstream uh, semiotic field. Uh, to study the uh, consumer, consumer culture from a semiotic point of view. Nevertheless, in uh, societies as uh, Bulgarian society, and the, in, probably very similar also in uh, Romania, we had uh, in a very short period of time the advent of uh, consumer culture from a let's say Western type of consumer culture, Western values for welfare, which uh, made possible uh, just in the range of one generation, even of one, let's say, scores uh, observation time, uh, a very rapid change. So our culture, our everyday uh, culture in um, my country, uh, changed before my uh, eyes, and being also uh, a student from uh, a foreign university, I studied in Italy, uh, for me it was very uh, interesting and actually a good challenge for the, the semiotic approach to try to model, to uh, develop some uh, theoretical or at least some uh, academic uh, observation of this rapid change of our culture. So, the advent of the consumer culture was the major scenario of what was uh, taking place in, in my country and it affected also very much the uh, university institution. That's why uh, very uh, first moment we started to recommend with Ali, which I would like to express my gratitude uh, for uh, inviting me. Uh, when he uh, asked me to speak about semiotics and uh, education, uh, my first and natural idea was, okay, I will try to uh, propose some ideas how the semiotic research in uh, consumer culture and everything I have done uh, about consumer uh, culture as uh, research and publications can be also applied or useful for giving some hints of the way we organized higher education. Those who have uh, not been 
communities between single uh, uh, studies consumer and culture. Actually, uh, there is ground for symbolic uh, studies of uh, uh, consumer culture as far as the symbolic side of consumption is uh, considered. This uh, side of consumption which makes social life, which makes uh, uh, relations, which transfers meanings from the goods to the persons who use those goods and uh, somehow help us to construct our identity. Now, consumption as a material process, as a functional activity, as a necessity which makes possible uh, our uh, physical uh, survival, is not that much interesting, uh, interesting for uh, the symbolic culture. But fortunately, in uh, advanced type of societies, consumption uh, assumed also a very important uh, symbolic communicative uh, aspects and consumption as cultural phenomena is interesting from symbolic approach or at least uh, is subject to uh, this kind of um, uh, study. Another important fact is that uh, there is a deep change into the uh, role of consumption in our uh, uh, society if we compare uh, the way the identity has been constructed in the industrial age uh, and in the postmodern consent category. The, the work and uh, production and uh, profession were much more important for uh, the identity of people in the industrial age, in the, the modern Europe, in the uh, emergence of the, the present day uh, industrialized society. In this uh, initial phase, let's say 19th century, 19th century, work and uh, profession were uh, the essential thing to determine the standing, social standing, the, the value of the person in uh, society. Whereas during the 20th century, and especially the second half after the Second World War, uh, the material wealth welfare, in, uh, rising to this uh, level of, of, of wealth, Fair transformed the uh, agenda in a very radical way and started the identity uh, which was deriving from the consumer activity, from the leisure, from the uh, free expression of, of people, started to be uh, the leading one, started to be uh, more important. So we observe, and one of the let's say, points of reference for uh, Consumer, uh, civil experience of consumer culture is the identity construction. The way our uh, identity through our leisure consumption uh, lifestyles uh, is uh, this is uh, the approach. Uh, ah, the question which came to my mind actually, I have developed this uh, uh, idea in uh, various uh, interventions. In public uh, space. Okay, if profession was so important for the industrial age, actually the industrial age coincides with the emergence of the modern university and uh, ever since in the university, uh, the conception of the university institution, there has always been a debate whether it is about uh, professional um, building of uh, uh, professional skills and whether the university should or it should be a focus of culture, a uh, uh, place where uh, only a spiritual activity takes place and so on and so forth. Okay, now today is time to ask, and this is why I think that consumer culture considerations can help understanding better or at least have some original ideas about the future of the university. Why not start to conceive the university also as a place where skills for our, not professional, but somehow everyday and uh, leisure activity training, since our society is quite complex and nowadays we need a huge uh, preparation and a lot of information skills which we usually acquire uh, spontaneously through uh, communication through the internet and so on and so forth. Why not think of uh, whether uh, the university can be 
useful also for preparing young people for their lifestyle construction and for their labor activities. And the way uh, today the resources, the cultural capital, which is very important for uh, having opportunities for realization, is not uh, told. I mean, it's not something radically new because there is a lot of similar things which are there in the university courses. But uh, so far I couldn't find any explicit uh, approach which says the university as helpful for our leisure and lifestyle infrastructure rather than the professional qualification. Now, here comes the, the idea of promotion of the mainstream. Let's see now uh, where the university is positioned in the discourse of uh, the mainstream. Because uh, in contemporary society, the mass society, uh, uh, the mainstream uh, pressure is uh, in a new quality and actually is quite strong, uh, which every individual uh, bears. We have every day. Uh, mainstream pressure, uh, which comes from media, which comes from the political representation, which comes from the labor market, and which comes from the uh, consumer market. What I mean in this, uh, for instance, uh, media, the logic of the media success is to uh, gain the bigger possible audience. So the chase for audience somehow uh, produces a pressure over us to be as the others, to see the same things as uh, the others see. The number of people who are watching whatever product in mass media production is uh, valued. It is immediately monetized because it is the, 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 in the nature of this uh, kind of capitalistic system to uh, capitalize if you can attract the audience. So, uh, the logic of this media uh, business is such that we are uh, somehow supposed, expected, and somehow pressed to be identical and to watch as much as possible the same thing. But what we do is another story, but it is a pressure to which either we resist or we just follow what the others do. This is the mainstream pressure coming from sociology. The political representation uh, works very much in the same way because obviously political parties need uh, electorate which thinks in the same way and which is uh, somehow uh, channeled by the political representation. So the, the bigger the success of political force is, this means that the bigger number of uh, people uh, follow it and actually the pressure which comes from the mainstream uh, instances of the mainstream is to be uh, identical, to be uh, like the other. Labor market also develops tools which, uh, in a way, uh, price the capacity of everyone to fulfill tasks to be uh, uh, suitable for the requirements. Anyway, in none of this in the consumer market, of course, the advertising, the um, mass production, uh, of course, probably it is the most powerful from all the other uh, instances of uh, mainstream pressure. This is the consumer market which uh, also um, follows and pursues the, uh, the bigger number of uh, followers. All these instances uh, in a way make us, ask us, uh, press us to be identical to one another, to be a group, group predictable group which follows the uh, logic of this uh, capitalization of all these uh, Instances. This is what in the discourse. Okay, now within this picture of the mainstream pressure to all of us and picture which these institutions are uh, positioned in this way, what is the role of the university or what is the role which is um, projected for this institution from the main, um, from the, let's say, official, the, the, the policy 
the official policy, the official EU policy about higher education, about the university, is uh, very much related to the labor market, to the economy, to the innovation, they call it triangle of knowledge, education, research, innovation, all this is in favor of more uh, integration to the uh, university and the society, but a society conceived in its uh, mainstream notion, where the economic success, the economic parameters are the, the leading uh, ones. So, in the official uh, reforms, the way uh, when we apply for projects, for instance, and we need to justify why we ask funds for uh, research, very often we need to justify our reasons with uh, adapting them to the priorities of EU policy, which EU policy about education is usually that learning should be uh, helpful for young people to find jobs, to be good workers, to be workforce, to be uh, qualified to and skillful to uh, execute the task which economy has uh, done. So the triangle of more education is looking like actually this is uh, the economy instead of and this. And the entrepreneurial university is a logical, logical response to the mainstream idea of higher education. The entrepreneurial university is a new type of university which uh, somehow sacrifices its internal logic and values and priorities, the, uh, let's say, academic freedom. It sacrifices the uh, long-lasting uh, rules for the uh, university as a fortress, as something separate from society, something which is Theory generates it's useful for society anyway. And an entrepreneurial university is a conception of university management which uh, opens the resources of the university towards the society. And this way, this interaction is uh, bi directional. So the university is supposed to provide the economy, to provide the research and um, innovation of the society with uh, useful research. with. Uh, output with outcomes, as we call them in the project language, deliverables, which in each one we need to explain exactly why uh, it serves the priorities and this mainstream idea of uh, the universe. Okay. Now, what consumer future can help? Here come the part where uh, I can share my uh, very direct observations of what happens with our students in a university. I uh, actually am uh, working, I'm working in a private university, which, uh, at least in our scenario in Bulgaria, is the university most uh, fitting to the idea of entrepreneurial university. Actually, we have a separate management. We have uh, a lot of uh, internal directives which uh, force us to open our programs to the work market, to the labor market, to make a research, to see what the companies need, and a lot of uh, other uh, forms of academic activity which are dedicated to the collaboration with uh, business. But also, the way the university takes the uh, strategic decisions, they are also entrepreneurial. They are not anymore uh, led by ideals or by, let's say, values or something spiritual life with uh, cultural, uh, let's say, patricious uh, expression of cultural values. They are usually uh, taken in order to transform the university for the Bulgarian society and to uh, help young people to have better lives, better realization. But always with this ideology of the economic welfare, the uh, economic work uh, business. And what happens in our entrepreneurial university, in the mainstream specialities like informatics, like uh, uh, say graphic design, or, and many others, happens that. Actually, only the 
the worst students are those who graduate. <laughs> Only the worst students can get. The others find job far before they arrive, and nobody returns to fulfill the studies until the end. Actually, there is a direct competition between the business and the university. It is not a collaboration. This, let's say, mm, mainstream and politically correct conception that the university should prepare young people and they will spend five years and then go to work, prepare for the work market. This is absolutely an impossible scenario. It does not reflect the dynamics of uh, present day employment. And actually, the present day companies, uh, they have developed, and I speak really on a statistical level, what mostly happened that the HR professionals in these companies, they are able to select the most talented, the most open to learn young people. They get them from the university. Actually, the university is transformed into something like a hub for job opportunities. It is just the place where a smart hub, because their students already express their desire what to study. So uh, uh, the companies and uh, uh, their HR approach to understand the, the resources and the potential of young people, how they develop really their skills with academic knowledge. These young people are attracted. They are attracted to very uh, high you know, sometimes salaries and they abandon uh, university and this process actually is very easily observable and we have statistics in our uh, university and it is a major trend that our students quit university before they uh, and the paradox is that only the I mean those who remain until the fifth year when uh, in their 20s early 20s probably this age is very um, very attractive for uh, companies, especially for uh, companies which uh, look for uh, people who they want to shape to their values, to their internal rules, to construct, because it is part of the science how to manage a, a company to uh, teach your employees in a ways in, to create a very deep level culture within them, create a corporate culture. And actually, companies are pretty aware that what students study in the university actually is totally useless for their performance in the company. It is useless for many objective reasons because uh, time changes, because the uh, know-how of each company is so uh, already kind of uh, capital of the company, it is not shared, and uh, what, let's say, old people in the university teach young people in the majority of the cases. Of course, there are a lot of exceptions, and don't get me wrong, I'm on the side of the university, and what I'm going to offer it is how we can have some ideas to avoid this. But what I described is what I observed in my university, and this is a major trend. Young people usually quit university to go to the companies, and this is not a collaboration. This is just a exploitation. The university taking this, uh, let's say, subject, uh, submitted role to serve business is something very dangerous. It will probably extinguish the, 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 uh, the values which has uh, created the university as an institution. It probably will disappear if we continue on this uh, street, on this uh, road of uh, considering that our purpose is to prepare uh, young people for the business. So, for me, there is a competition and not collaboration. Okay, now, how can we imagine a university which is uh, not subject to this uh, situation which I call a dead end? The, uh, Lowering uh, young people for their jobs. Uh, I found a book. There is a lot of scholarship, a lot of uh, philosophy written about a lot of opinions about the future of the university. Uh, I happen to read parts of this book from Barnett. Imagining the University of the Future, which uh, I, I like the methodology in this book. I have not uh, uh, got deep inside it. There is a lot about what is imagination, how imagination works, and uh, 
this kind of stuff, which is not relevant. But the, uh, let's say, oh, how to uh, unleash the imagination in order to produce good uh, ideas for the future of the university. Uh, there is a big typology of forms of imagination, utopian imagination, uh, pragmatic imagination, mm -hmm. uh, empirical imagination, so on and so forth. But those are examples of what kind of universities uh, through this approach are conceivable in this approach. Argument. So I tried to go to the idea to uh, present the ideas of uh, how to avoid or how consumer culture can Still, consumer culture can help our ideas about better university. I got to know how this imagining the bureaucratic university, the corporate university, the marketized university, the modified university, the capitalist university, the network university, the borderless university, the super complex university, actually the selfish university, the authentic university. Ecological university, for example, and the most progression we put up about the ecological university. All those conceptions are philosophy which plays the institution in its overall role. They reconsider the overall role of the academic institution inside society, not just uh, because this critique is that if we make, make things apart uh, and as a uh, this is working, this is not working. Uh, if we think the reform and the ideas of future university from inside and partially, it will uh, never uh, work. Okay, what, how can we imagine an uh, uh, alternative profile for the university? So, from some of these ideas, the authentic university, for instance, uh, converge over what I would like to propose as an uh, input from consumer culture. Okay. Now, can we imagine a university which, uh, which uh, student programs are against the mainstream? So, okay, that's not a question, but a rhetorical question. Now, what might be a university which student programs are against, which study programs helps its students to support and to resist the pressure of the mainstream. It's not something new. For instance, in 68, they say, the major force of, for the reform of the academic institution were uh, the students and hard young professors some of the great figures of semiotics uh, were solidary with the uh, what I happened in the late 90s, the beginning of 90s, in Bologna University, actually all my professors were uh, followers of 68. They were people whose uh, thinking about the university was shaped during the 68. So they were speaking like uh, a mythological time. And actually, the idea of this uh, uh, period after 68, where the whole society was also mostly probably the university uh, Changed after the pressure of opening to more uh, to respond to these young people' uh, expectations and to be uh, something different from what it used to be before. Okay, this was against the mainstream, this was a big reform. Now, there is less political. Uh, well, now, if we take the consumer culture and this mainstream pressure of present day, because the pressure and the main things which uh, so this was against capitalism, it was against war, it was against colonialism, and it was about these big narratives in the political world. So the uh, 68 was uh, against a movement against mainstream and reform, which followed this uh, pressure against the mainstream, but they were led by the uh, political thing. Whereas, what might be a uh, university which is against the mainstream, but from the point of view of this consumer culture and capitalism uh, pressure in its everyday occurrence. Okay, but can this university still be an attractive university and not an old fashioned authorities for academic bars? I don't want to mix uh, my point with a lot of critiques of the reforms led by, uh, let's say, 
old generation academicians who also feel that something uh, unjust and incorrect happens with the university. Definitely, it is an, a, another uh, idea because this idea is about changing the university, changing the approach to uh, education, not returning what used to be once when the university was much more important than it is now. So, university which is not for students driven by vocationalism, uh, new work which I read in all these uh, books about. Present day. There are students driven by vocationalism, this is the mainstream. But there are other students which strive for an independent lifestyle based on the negation or opposition to the mainstream. I think there are such minority, it might be a micro trend or already an important trend in societies. I have some data about it. So, university for those who want to live independent life but still benefit from the, um, let's say, the level development of our society. Not uh, a radical negation of the present, but just to resist. A lifestyle, okay, independent lifestyle, by some lifestyle based on acquired in the university knowledge and skills. Okay, are there uh, such knowledge and skills which might be learned in the university and at the same time not to serve to make the young person a good professional, but skills which make the young person gain resources, gain money, but also be capable of uh, uh, using very, uh, very optimal ways resources with more, uh, let's say, ability to find good opportunities to achieve high quality of life with much less resources than the what the mainstream consumer pressure uh, teaches. Now, in uh, 2008, there was a big book about a uh, Bulgarian author, copying a book which appeared in 2004 in the United States by Mark Penn. The book in the United States was called Microtrends. And in Bulgaria in 2008, uh, a scholar, a sociologist from Sofia University, took the uh, methodology of Mark Penn and made the same kind of, uh, let's say, uh, x-rays to the Bulgarian uh, society to grasp the most important microtrends. And in 2008, there were uh, there was a micro trend in Bulgaria, like 2.6% of Bulgarians, which were Bohemians at work. And since then, this micro trend is growing. What are uh, Bohemians at work? Those were uh, kind of well qualified young people whose values for their professional realizations were putting their family, their free time, their identity on the first place, and then uh, the job has something secondary, which was not so important, even the income was not a leading thing, but the most important thing was to have a job which leave them enough time and enough uh, uh, resources to dedicate to what they uh, want to do. They are called Bohemians work, which is just a denomination, but actually it is okay. Can the university programs with consist of university programs which uh, Repair for Bohemians at work. Okay, independency and authenticity. This is very current and actually emerging uh, values many uh, young people share. This is a profile of this uh, new kind of uh, idea from the university which. Uh, I'm trying to outline independency and authenticity. Independency means, okay, for some time when I was reading indie music, I thought that this was Indian music. And actually, it's curious sometimes what was supposed to be actually indie music. Finally, I thought this is independent music. There is independent art, there is independent. Uh, when the web is that there are independent art uh, activities. Actually, more and more the, the uh, 
let's say, artistic activities, they part on the side of the uh, independence, whereas uh, the industry of entertainment involves everything which can, can be sold. So this uh, attitude, this value system, which we the uh, independence and our authenticity definitely is against the commerce and actually in the value system of this, let's say, generation, this target of our idea of what might be the university of the future are people who are led by kinds of independence and authenticity. Okay? Such people, such young people, they are in the university um, unle unless they, don't, they think that this is too much mainstream, actually much, there is no university conceived to uh, serve and to uh, fulfill the expectation of this kind. So uh, the university is considered as a mainstream and many of uh, the people searching this lifestyle are not uh, interested in it. But, there is not a few which are part of our uh, university also. We identify. Actually, I made a, in, in 2011-2012, I was responsible for uh, some administration in our university. And during this uh, period, we made also a research of, uh, make a kind of typology. Actually, it was my idea and I applied Jean-Marie Floch model of the typology of the users of French Metro, where to make these four types, very um, deep, uh, let's say, insight of using the, the semiotic model to uh, understand better uh, the fruition of a service, the service of the French Metro. We found out that the typology of the students at our university were not very dissimilar from the users of the French method. And there were those the professionals who do everything in the most the easiest way and they're just very well informed which professor in which day and how they can get the, the grade without uh, doing uh, that much. There were the explorers, actually 10% only of the students were the equivalent of watching the French, French method were the explorers. Actually, those who were really interested for their study, those who want to take more, those who uh, run after uh, professors to have more readings, to uh, ask better feedback, which were actually, uh, was the opinion of the professor was mattered, and who wanted most of them to continue to work in the university or make, make a Page. Actually, 10%, only 10% of our students, our university has like uh, 10,000 students, only 10% according to this research were uh, something equivalent to the explorers in the French Metro. Okay, they were the sum of both daydreamers, daydreamers, which actually they don't know absolutely why they are there. Their parents told them to go there, they have to do whatever the others do, and so on and so forth. And okay, they were the but it was very easy to uh, find the correct and 10 percent are these uh, students those who are in the they perform, perform really better because the attitude toward toward knowledge is different now for instance these students study branding which is kind of very mainstream especially but when it comes to uh, define their projects we find out, this is also from my direct experience, many young people now study branding but not to go to work for a big company. They study branding in order to be able to sell their own handmade production or to promote their band or to make the visual identity of their activity, whatever this activity, and most of the times it is not commercial activity. But nevertheless, the branding approach is uh, working. It's a pragmatic tool to self-promotion of your activity to any way to obtain some shares and some profits of what you are doing as an independent person. So branding was considered also a tool for achieving better. Uh, uh, so something which is initially conceived to feed the mainstream companies, the big uh, corporations with brand managers, actually we found that the best of our students still in this kind of uh, forces, they were actually interested in developing their own brands. 
and it was scheduled with music with the independent cinema and the rest. The freelance work. This is also a major trend. It also uh, is present in the study of all the micro uh, trends. More and more freelancers, project-based work rather than standard office uh, employment. This is also the profile of the person which, I don't know, the university of this. It makes sense to uh, reform our university in order for uh, serving this kind of people who are really interested and open and use the knowledge for uh, resist to the mainstream rather than consider the university as a uh, servant of the uh, corporate. Okay, nowadays emerge alternative forms even of finance. And I found out that once if you want to be prepared to avoid the dependency of the labor market and the financial market and the consumer market actually uh, a good qualification in uh, understanding what is a Bitcoin and what are the new currencies and what are these uh, world banks uh, and barter exchanges which internet made absolutely a new qualitative step into uh, uh, allowing people to uh, exchange services without being dependent on the monetary system on the, uh, this financial uh, say rule which uh, most of the uh, resistant uh, groups to the mainstream are mostly annoyed and indignated about uh, the financial rule. Okay, in the university there might be uh, still also matters which allow us to be more independent of them. Uh, okay, there was a conference uh, three weeks ago which I couldn't follow because I was in counters. I don't know where you should be. <laughs> and uh, this conference was about the digital nomads, and actually, this is a new phenomenon again, in a way of reflecting part of the values of this uh, non mainstream mentality, of which actually a uh, common denominator is to be uh, not to subject to the uh, this corporate mainstream political organization of uh, society. Of course, we know informatics is unavoidable and actually uh, the capacity to uh, the competence of uh, programming and of navigating gives you a lot of advantages to use your resources but also to have to achieve, to have access to resources which are paid and these kind of skills which might be taught in the Consumer culture university, they are uh, also subject. We can think whether this can be a matter of teaching. Tourism also is by change to this other sphere where if you have good skills, if you have a network uh, uh, connections and grow reputation on the internet, you can really make a, um, let's say, have access to touristic experiences which are really. Uh, rich and corresponding to the uh, experience which uh, the mainstream people, the consumer, the subjects of consumer culture should spend a lot of money. There are now networks to make alternative kind of tourism which is definitely as a quality and as a point in which uh, uh, but again this is something which can be taught which uh, already represents a uh, skill. Okay, they are as consumers, they are for vintage, for handmade goods. Also, there is reading retreats. I don't know if anyone heard about reading retreats. People who are really uh, with this uh, office present and groups of people gather and just read books and enjoy uh, uh, free time and, and reading. And okay, this is another activity which can be encompassed into the university. The nutrition, the veganism, the uh, okay, uh, animalism, also also other trends which are present, which are important and important figures here, and also it makes part of this culture which I'm trying to define. Okay, 
which should be called, but only among us, the hipster university. Most of these values are taken from the, the subculture uh, values. No hipster recognizes himself as a hipster. This is very important. So whatever we do, we will never run it as a hipster university because uh, no one will go there because they will be there. But hipster university, this is uh, an important trend. It occurs in all countries. Okay, probably it's too limited if we define it just as a subculture. But the values which drive this uh, hipster subculture has spread over many more people which we hardly can define. But can we think of university reform in a way that gives, uh, let's say, room and gives qualification and knowledge for uh, this attitude and actually prepare young people to live independent, uh, authentic experience to create community and so on and uh, so forth? This is what came to my mind when I thought how consumer culture studies can uh, invite us, invite us, give us good ideas for the uh, future of the university. Uh, Thank you very much, Christian. Very interesting presentation, full of insights, excellent timing, by the way, you still have 17 seconds in case you want to tell something else. Uh, so, uh, the floor is open for our questions, I'm sure that there are many who want to start, so yeah. Uh, Wait. I could do it after. Uh, it's very interesting that working in a, a Romanian university, I. I've thought about this kind of, uh, and even to this kind of concept, Hipsterish University, I've called it uh, for some time. But uh, the way I reflected about my own uh, thinking of the problem is that, okay, if you propose this concept of Hipster University, then thinking in a marketing-like logic, this is a kind of positioning, yes, on a market of higher education, where you have a special niche, the Hipster University, with a very niche as well uh, audience or public, and the better the targeting, the better the business might be. Nonetheless, uh, on the one hand, this means somehow to enter the logic of marketization of education to address a very special and niche audience which somehow uh, collides with the universi universality of the educational ideals, yes? What are we supposed to do with those who don't share this kind of ideals? Should they remain uh, in their own mindset? And so on and so forth. So finally, this kind of positioning of uh, hipsterish university is in fact serving very well the, the very logic that you're supposed to denounce. Thank you very much. This is uh, let's say uh, explicit contradiction. Well, I put the among us. This among us. It is because this is just idea to share among us. Definitely, we cannot brand it in this way. Indeed, if we brand it, then we enter in the mainstream. So our target is supposed not to. But on the base of this reflection, there might be let's say another conception of study programs and. In let's say address this uh, audience and not necessarily in a commercial way because and we are not this is not a logic for a private university. It might be just an idea of what to do to restore the importance of the university and institution and to take it away from this subjection of the, of the business. So it might not be kind of an elite of uh, low number students, but still an idea to promote the, the idea of university in the present day uh, society and lifestyles. So it's a contradiction here. Thank you. So the next two questions are already booked. Thank you for uh, this presentation. I'd like to inform you that my daughter is 17 now, uh, 16 and 17. Uh, they are having this class in high school, entrepreneurship, one hour per week. And who, what, who is interested 
We have more classes. So already in high school in Romania, they started something similar, teaching the children how to create their own product, how to sell it, how to make advertisement for it. And they're taking photos, they're making their own advertisement and plan for business. And uh, this starts at age 16 and 17. Thank you very much. It's a very nice uh, thing to prepare them to be independent and not necessarily. If they're not, not everybody's interested and they know this. They address to whoever is interested. My daughter is going to the classes and I, I do not everything to offer to her. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the very interesting talk, Christian. You know, we've been talking before, you know that I have a similar uh, perspective with yours here. We have written to a large extent. I'm a bit puzzled uh, with this thing that you say that it occurs that. Uh, the graduates are the worst students in, in top performing universities, the mainstream top performance universities. You know what? I agree with you. And I, I think what that I understand what that means. Uh, but uh, as I'm sure you're aware, it's very controversial, not really even wrong, to um, think of students as worse or better. Now, uh, I do hear you. Now, I've, I've been pondering on this for your talk. How come I disagree with the. Um, uh, labeling of worse and better students, while well, I do agree really, that is the graduates uh, in top mainstream universities that are the worst. Maybe actually that's really what defines the worst students. And on that account, there are people like you and I were the worst students. Um, and actually, now, now that I think of it, it, it kind of makes sense. Teachers hated me. Uh, often. Maybe say something more difficult. Can you explain why you <laughs> No. What I mean with good and bad students, uh, it's very pragmatic though, and uh, definitely I sympathize with all those who remain for a long time in university, and maybe you arrived until the end, and well, we were hated probably secretly by our professor. But imagine this very uh, easy to imagine uh, situation. We had a World Congress of Semiotics in Sofia two years ago. We needed a graphic, uh, visual uh, identity and so on. And actually we announced kind of competition of who will design a lot. So there were many students who had free time and, and actually no of these uh, projects was good. So I went and asked the professor of graphic design students but tell me, who can do really something good? Because oh, those are not, they're always busy, they don't follow the lectures, we cannot. But he gave me a business card of some of the, the students. So I started to look for these students which were absolutely not uh, interested in voluntary. Uh, so I say good students are those who found job and who, after it, really did a great job. And those who were with the free time and were the got the maximum grades because they were uh, available and they put all their effort and they explained their projects, but actually they were not good projects. And in this sense, in informatics it's crucial. We know this is and our colleagues from the informatics department, they, they say it in this way. We lose our best students in the second year and they go and work for like 2,000 euro, which in Bulgaria is like three times more than the average salary and do not never return to the, the university in this sense. Okay, in pragmatical, not in moral sense, we can play. let's say the more professional and the less professional. Those who remain to graduate, usually this is because they have not the talents for the profession they choose. And most of the specialities are now, the, most of the study courses are about profession and philosophy, sociology, semiotics, all these things which were very popular at the beginning and the foundation of our university gradually disappeared. Well, I see different trends and answers. Uh, uh, first, to Eileen's point about uh, the best students, worst students, and, and yours too, is you have the conventionally good student who is always the good student in primary school, secondary school. But of course, as, as level of education changes, what counts as a productive or creative student will change too. So, for instance, many doctoral students in America will get to the point where they're being a good student all the time. But once they pass their exams and now they're supposed to do their own research, they fail. Because they, they've been 
you know, trained to be a good student, like a good seal bouncing a ball on a nose, and not thinking outside on their own. Point. On the hipster view, we already have this in a way in America because we have many small colleges or large colleges, private or public, who, you know, the students, they, they chase students. They have, you know, they market to students. So they, and, and they have to distinguish themselves from each other to do that. So they're very much embracing these hipster values at particular schools. So the idea is we'll say, well, it's, it, it, for any student in America, there's probably one or two or many uh, universities or colleges that will fit their profile and then be happy at. And then finally, talking about the switch, uh, years ago in Cluj, in 97, I was, wrote a paper to start off because I've been dealing with the EU and policy of work and preparing students for work and graduates and so forth. And I think I'm tired of this sort of discourse. And so I just sort of on a whim wrote a paper, I want to establish the University of Useless Knowledge. And I wrote a whole paper on this idea. <laughs> and there is, was a hit because uh, some fellow raised his hand and said, well, you just described the French universities before 1968. So, uh, so the idea is useless knowledge. And of course, this has been talked about by Thorsten Bevan and others, the idea that the good university, the intellectual university, exists or, or Carl Luna before him would say this is to train people in non-utilitarian knowledge. Okay. Um, thank you. Actually, I had a research in the United States. I was at Hebrew University mm -hmm. this notion, which was and again the useless knowledge is a bit different from uh, I try to differentiate from this. Okay, here you get knowledge exactly as the courses which uh, the young uh, Romanians uh, get. So it's okay, useful knowledge, but useful to resist to the mainstream right. uh, pragmatic law. It's in a way right. A critique of a uh, university of critique, like maybe a Frankfurt School idea. But actually, I wanted to put this in the pre presentation. That now, probably you have heard like some weeks ago, there was in the Yale University group of young students, they were denying studying Shakespeare and classical English literature because they were all males, white males. So this group denied the, the, the necessity to study classical because, okay, not this, this is too much. This is a radical uh, position against uh, something very ideological and very, let's say, speculative. Right, right. Hipster is just to find your way and be prepared to cope with this corporate world in a way you uh, have more control of your life. Mm -hmm. And one last short question. Anybody? Okay. Um, I'm, um, I'm a recent graduate uh, and um, I see that uh, the difference between the previous generations and uh, my own generation and the, the actual generation is pretty large. Um, I work sometimes with uh, a very small amount, number of students because uh, they work, they have different jobs and um, I always tell them, it's not good for you, you should come to classes, you should first learn how to work, how to do because this is not professional for you. And I think maybe um, there should be some kind of room in universities for students to have um, only part jobs for those who maybe need money. Do you think this is a useful rule that should be taken? Absolutely. Uh, should be part time or project oriented, something which allows the student to combine all the office work where the students have to be in from life. Actually, we changed the whole program of our university in order to fit to the working hours of our companies. And this is, I think, a big step behind and kind of a retreat of the institution to adapt the schedules, to ask uh, professors to come in the evening to study because, uh, and this is not a night school, it is a mainstream university. It's a university in all its glory, uh, but actually adapts to the work market. So, absolutely, yes, if there is a room for students to work only part time jobs and project oriented jobs, it would be much better. Than, uh, support, 
Very well. Thank you very much, everybody. I'd like to invite you to uh, another coffee break uh, and one more round of applause.